today, oh boy, we're jumping back into our All the Mods Aid world, and I am super excited to get into a new mod today. And that new mod is going to be Elemental Craft. Now, the last time I played around with Elemental Craft, it was really in its infancy. Um, it was very early on, and uh, it was back in All the Mods 6. And, uh, well, it's come a long way since then. Uh, the mod has definitely grown and has significantly changed from the looks of it. And uh, today, after I get some more mystical agriculture plants crafted up, hope to get to at least tier four items crafted, uh, which is what I'm working on right now, I'm going to be diving into elemental craft. So of course, after getting a bunch of essence seeds, I got all the way up to at least uh, done with tier five. I have all of the basic seeds at least that I can make done. We're ready to jump into elemental craft. Now, elemental craft uh, has a guidebook. Uh, however, this guidebook uh, doesn't exactly just open up right away and show you a bunch of information. What it does is it sort of prompts you to craft what it recommends. And so you have to unlock unlock progress as you go through here. So all the information about specific items, if you're looking for that, is not gonna be there until you unlock it. So uh, I have definitely messed around with this mod before. There is a lot more, it looks like, that was added to it. Uh, but the basics are still fundamentally uh, basic like they're still there and, and pretty basic on how things start so one of the first things that you're going to want to make is of course uh or what you're going to want to find are these inert crystals um now inert crystals can be found underground and i don't see a like essence for it so if we run out of inert crystals we're gonna have to look for them and uh as you can see i've not found a whole lot of them uh which is kind of it might become a, a problem for us moving forward i, I have no idea uh, but we're gonna have to figure out where exactly these are located but yeah you're gonna find these underground you're gonna mine them you're gonna get inert crystals and uh we're gonna have to put these inert crystals to use now i think under elemental craft there is a whole progressions tab so if you don't want to use the book and you want to use this this is also a fantastic way of doing it but it just follows the same line as the book um now after you end up getting some of these inert crystals, you turn them into these containing crystals. And uh, these are what you're gonna use for a lot of crafting recipes. Um, so as you can see, tons of crafting recipes here, and that's basically what they're used for. Uh, the first thing we're gonna be making though are these pipes. Now these pipes, when uh, you place them down, instead of using a wrench on them, you just use your, your hand, and you can right click to disconnect them, connect them, uh, set them to extract and or set them to, uh, to insert. Um, and yeah, they're gonna be used to move the uh, elemental fluid. What, what is it called in here? It is uh, source. So you're gonna be moving the elements source around uh, from container to container or machine to machine. And that's the primary function of, uh, of these pipes. And there's of course uh, different tiers. So these are the cheapest to make. And of course, the, the higher in you go, they're gonna require special special materials that you have to use uh, infusion for and things like that to get those materials. But moving forward, let's get into this and uh, figure out exactly what we're gonna need. So first of all, uh, as you can see, uh, that's, I guess, a great place to start. It wants us to make a container. So utilizing the pipes that we just crafted, let's go ahead and make a container. Let's just a piece of glass with some pipes, right? That is pretty straightforward. Uh, now, it's going to tell us that, well, now that we have that, we need some way to extract this source uh, from elements, and we need uh, some way to get that into this container. Uh, now, there's, of course, the element infuser, which is what we're going to use to pull out of the tank and uh, infuse into uh, different materials. But this right here is uh, the element extractor that we're going to use from, uh, to pull from source orbs that we find in the, the world. Um, now, the element evaporator is probably what we're going to use the most, as we have a mob farm, and as you can see, these are all elemental shards that have come from the mods, uh, mobs, and there's, uh, of course, four different types. These are all the four different elements. Of course, you have uh, fire, earth, air, and water, and that's all the materials you're going to be dealing with. Uh, now, getting started uh, without using that, we are going to do it the way that you would probably end up doing it in the world. Uh, so one of the first sources, of course, is water that we're going to want to find, right? So let's go ahead and add some things to our list uh, that we're going to need, right? Because the upgrade to this pipe 
requires drenched iron. I think that's something that's worth going for. Uh, and drenched iron is going to end up requiring an elemental infuser, which by the way, we should be able to make the infuser. Let's go ahead and make that. We'll, we'll get into this later. Um, and then the other thing we're gonna need is an extractor. So an element extractor, looks like I'm gonna have to make another one of those. And there we go. And then of course we have some improved versions of these things. There's of course, the, the, more, the further we get into this, the better the setups we'll get. Uh, but now we just have our base element extractor. Of course, we can see what it does. It extracts elements from sources. Yes, sources. Let's talk about sources. So elemental sources are going to be found in the world. They're these little orbs, and we've we've seen them uh, over time. I don't know if they're the easiest to find when it's nighttime. I don't I don't think they illuminate the ground. Do they illuminate? I don't think they illuminate the ground, uh, but they might be easier seen in the dark. They they can be a little hard to spot. You're most likely going to encounter them as you're just walking around the terrain. Um, but I'm going to see if I can't potentially find one nearby. Now, a lot of these sources, as you can see, there is a earth one right here. Um, a lot of times they're found pretty easily over bodies of water. I think that's where they're most uh, easy to spot. Uh, but I'm looking for a water one if I can't potentially find one. But uh, if not, right there, as you can see, it's a little hard to see if we get yeah down here. You, now you can definitely see it. Um, this is an earth, and this is very re reminiscent, in my opinion, of old Thomcraft. Uh, old Thomcraft would have nodes, and as you can see, yeah, right here, here's an air one that's right over the water. Uh, as I said, like the water just makes it so much easier to find them in the river. Now, of course, you can find them out in the woods and everything else like that. I'm gonna continue my search. I would say this is probably one of the uh, the more fun parts, though, is actually searching these out. Now, of course, while I was exploring, looking for this, I found Leo. <laughs> Leo the Feedable, uh, which is a mythic apotheosis mob. Uh, kind of interesting. Just floating around here with 600 health. What a beast. So after a little bit of searching, as you can see, I have found a water one. Um, and now, of course, what we can do is just pillar up to where this location's at. Looks like right here. And I think this is perfect. What we'll do is we'll place down our tank. Boop. And then, of course, place our element extractor on top of that. And you can start to see this is now extracting the element or extracting the spirit from the element and filling up this tank. Now, of course, I can take this tank elsewhere or I can start to, do, to kind of work from this location um, and that might be the best for right now but be weary if you do deplete this thing completely uh, it takes a, uh, a recharge period before this thing will actually uh, uh, allow you to extract again it has to fully recharge before uh, doing that so it's really hard to see right now I think later on you might be able to see this a little better and I do remember that uh, in the past you were able to take these with you and bring them back to your base. So that's something that we should be able to do later on. Now with this, uh, let's go ahead and try out our piping and infusion, right? So let's place this. I think this goes on top of here, or maybe I have to have a block that it is placed on. Uh, element infuser. It should be able to be in placed on one of these pipes, I think, and yeah. Oh, maybe it's this right here. No, that's uh, that's just one of the other connectors. Now see, this is what I get for not reading the book and just trying to rely on my memory alone. It has to go on top of a container. So currently I only have this one container, right? So let's go ahead and break all of these. And this actually needs to go onto the container here, as you can see. Ah, and it is going to utilize this container. So what we would be doing uh, later on is going from container to container. Uh, so we would have a separate container over here that this would go on. And of course the extractor would extract. Now, of course this drenched material is kind of what we're wanting, right? And we need to place this on here and it's just taking some regular iron and converting it. So when we place this on here, it's going to take a moment. And as you can see, it gives us drenched iron. And of course this is a manual process. Um, I don't know if, Piping, I mean, piping should work with this, but I think our container with just two is completely depleted. Um, so let's see if we can't figure out a better way 
uh, currently to potentially set this up. And let's not use this for right now. Uh, I, I do know where this is located at, so I can always come back to it. But let's try using the stuff that our mobs are generating. Now, to be able to utilize the uh, the shards that we have, well, I'm going to be using the Element Evaporator. That's going to go right here. And I, I want to test this out. I want to try using a hopper to sort of automate this. Um, but if we take a look at the Elemental, uh, we have all these small shards, and of course we have these larger shards. Let's start with the small shards, and we will use the water ones for right now. Uh, now, by default, we should be able to put this in. And you can see it's extracting out of that shard and it is applying that to the tank very slowly, I must say. Um, so I almost wonder if going with the larger shards are probably better. And I think, can't we take these shards to make the larger ones? Yes. So yeah, definitely probably convert the smaller shards into the larger ones. Um, we can actually swap these out. And it looks like the larger shards are, are a little bit faster. Uh, yeah, and will probably last a lot longer. Um, and I think we can hopper into this. Let's try. So if I hopper into that, will it work? Oh, no, I ended up putting an entire stack in there. Oh, interesting. I, I didn't actually think it was an entire stack, but I guess it is. Okay, so we need to get that over to this so that way we can utilize our other tools, right? Um, so we have our pipes. Let's see. For some reason, all of our stuff disappeared. I don't know where my stuff went, but it, it disappeared as, as you can see. Uh, I don't know. Um, so I'm gonna place my pipe down in here. And then right here will be the element infuser. And uh, we need to tell this to pull. Um, so we should be able to click on here somewhere and tell it where to go. There we go, right there. So it's very, very like specific, but I was able to pull from there. And uh, now I want to test this as well. Can I use a hopper to put the iron in? And it looks like yes. And so I would almost assume that you could easily automate this by just having a pipe that extracts and maybe is filtered that uh, tells you specifically here. Um, Cause I don't know if the hopper interacts with the bottom of this. It very well could. Um, we could test. Because I know in some of the machines, it actually goes through the block. It does not look like in this case it is doing it. But then again, I can't really tell because there's not enough material currently to allow this to go through. Nope, nope, nope. Doesn't look like that is doing anything. Okay. But there it is. And as you can see, just to make sure, we'll place it down again, just to make sure uh, that it doesn't look searching for the the product. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, a pipe would definitely be the way to go about automating this material for sure. Now setting up automation for this, as you can see, yes, you are going to need a filter in order for this to work. Um, so I will go ahead and add this to the filter, submit, and then it won't uh, just keep consuming all of our iron. And thus, I mean, this is sort of automated. Um, and this is really good because we are going to need this particular material for a lot of stuff. As you can see right here, this is the holder I was talking about. I believe that this um, allows us to keep some of the, the elemental contents on our person, which is kind of nice, but it's going to be utilized for several different things. As you can see, like there's just other materials. This is a, a huge part of the craft. So yeah, we're definitely going to need these. So now the work from this point could be either you go the route of using the actual sources that are around and we work towards a way of actually getting that raw source moved. Uh, but before we can even do that, we really need to focus here. So I guess it would be sort of a back and forth normally. Thankfully, we have these shards and large quantities of these shards that we don't really have to worry about too much. Um, but I need to get a setup for each one of these individual uh, elements, right? We need, we need one of each. And uh, we're going to need to start upgrading things. So our main goal as of right now, this is the main focal point, is to make a pure crystal. Uh, now, to make a pure crystal, this is sort of what we're reaching for, and it's always good to have a goal of what you're going for. Um, now, to do this, we need a pure infuser. This is going to require a fire pedestal, water pedestal, earth pedestal, and air pedestal. And then, of course, the infuser goes in the middle. And then we supply, uh, I believe, the pedestals here with the amount of source. And then, of course, they need their corresponding crystals. 
Now, the, cor the corresponding crystals need element infusers. So each set of this is going to also require uh, its own elemental infuser. So for each element, we need its own separate infuser. And uh, we're going to end up making these larger containers because this is just how it's going to hold enough of the source. Uh, the element evaporator, I have one for each already ready to go. And so I'm just going to supply it with that. It's probably going to be, it's not going to be the fastest process in the world, but over time should be able to easily fill this elemental container. And from the looks of it, it looks like we can pick these up uh, a little bit easier and they do show how much is actually inside. Now I went ahead and of course I needed to add an extra area over here. So this is just an extension over to our courtroom, our courtyard. And uh, as you can see, yeah, just some simple little thing I built over here to give myself some more space because I'm going to need some space for this mod. Um, now, I, I've already gotten kind of this thing set up here. I have all of my shards and I, I aligned this in a way that sort of represents this right here. So we have the water on the left, uh, the air on the right, the fire uh, on the north, and of course the south. We have ourselves earth. Um, and I'm going to need, let's see, element. I'm going to need myself in an infuser on this section here and some stone because our next step is going to be converting stone into a different type of rock and that is white rock yep this is going to be used in a lot of the builds a lot of the machines and, and other equipment that we're going to be messing around with in here is going to require this and you can see this uh should have opened a new section it looks like we have a spell section which there are spells in this i don't know how much i'm going to invest into spells as the reason why I'm setting all of this stuff up is because this particular thing is used a lot. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's actually used in this. And I believe even if you want to do late game and you want to get creative items, this mod is used heavily in the uh, creative like in game sort of uh, part of this pack. So I would like to show this and I kind of want to get this all set up. So this is what this is what we're working with. Uh, so this stone will hopefully unlock some stuff. Looks like I need to make a pipe cover to progress the book. Um, now pipe covers are really nice. So if you want to hide these, you should be able to use a pipe cover for it. And this should be able to be like a facade. Yeah, it, it allows you to hide a pipe behind a block, um, which is pretty nice. I'm assuming maybe I have to place these down or shift click. Yeah, shift click as you can see right here, and then I can facade them just like that. That is really nice. I love when pipe mods had the ability to facade because I just feel like that's a necessity. <laughs> uh, at this point, I really love hiding pipes and not having a facade. For example, the pipes mod itself, I, I wish that one had some facades. Now, of course, I highly recommend getting this sort of basic setup done because you're going to find yourself really struggling with this mod if you don't have available resources uh, such as all of the elements that are required, right, to make all of these individual items, including glass, right? This is another one. We need this right here, burnt glass, in order to progress to make the larger containers. So all of this is definitely progression. So as soon as I have this, I can go ahead now and uh, get myself prepped up. I can break this setup. And I can add myself a much larger container, right? And uh, so now we can have ourselves this set up here. Or the uh, the reality is we're probably going to end up having more of these evaporators. Uh, but for right now, this, this of course works. Um, we want a larger tank, right? So that way, uh, if we're not using it, it's just going to build up, right? And we definitely need it to build up. Uh, and these are going to store way, way more so we can do more crafts. Now, moving further into this mod, we are going to need to make ourselves a furnace. Now, this is just kind of proof of showing that, well, uh, we can actually use this mod for other things. So it can double ore, uh, which is kind of useful. So we can take an actual ore itself and turn it into two like uh, dust or, or raw, I guess you would say. And uh, we can also smelt. So the furnace here is going to require this. It's going to be an inert crystal. So let's grab an inert crystal. And we just place one on here. And this is going to imbue that. It's going to take a lot, as you can see. An entire thing, basically, to get this turned into uh, a fire crystal. 
And then the fire crystal is then going to be turned into either a blast furnace or a furnace. Yes, all that fun stuff. So do we really need a furnace right now? No, but I do need this in order for me to even further my own knowledge inside this book uh, because it is a requirement. Now, I think uh, like some of the rewards early on in the actual quest book are really nice, by the way, uh, because you can get a few extra like white rocks and stuff that are going to help. Uh, so you don't have to stand here and constantly create white rocks. Of course, yeah, setting up automation would be nice, but you're going to need to use these later on as well. Now, of course, to power this furnace, well, it needs to be hooked in, uh, I believe, to another container. Um, so if we take ourselves another small container, I believe this hooks into this. I think. Actually, it, it may tell me in here. Uh, yeah, a small container, but uh, okay. So it needs to be on top of a, a regular container. So this right here, and a regular elemental container. And let's see, do I have any extras of these? We can go ahead and make one. Okay, perfect. So yes, let's go ahead and remove this one. And I guess at this point, we're gonna have to really just be making, we're gonna have to make these extra containers. And so we'll separate this and allow that to fill into there. And then we can put things in like, for example, cobble, right? Let's uh, do cobble. And we will put some cobble in there. And it's smelting it all up. Just like that. Interesting. And as you can see, it shows a nice little diagram, which is very, very handy. Now, once the fire has sort of done its thing, the results are spit out on top. And there we go. We have some stone. It's, I mean, it's a, it's an interesting thing. Like, it's kind of nice. Like, later on, of course, you'll have plenty of essence that is, that is coming from, or plenty of source that is coming from a source orb. And so, uh, this is actually kind of worth later on, potentially you know, for some smelting if you were using this in a sort of standalone situation, or you started off with this. I've definitely used this in all the mod six. I sort of started off with this mod as sort of my early progression towards ore duplication, which was very, very interesting. Now, of course, the next thing on the list is the elemental binder, and this is gonna, this is a really important tool. Uh, so currently we're using infusion, but the elemental binder takes items, multiple items, and uses, uh, the element there uses the source to craft a very particular thing. Um, so for example, this is used in a couple of these modded recipes, as you can see here, where you have a teleportation core, uh, and, and you have to put them in this order. Now, early on, when I initially uh, played this mod, uh, when it first came out, this wasn't really there. Uh, so it's really nice now that we know what order to put these items in. Uh, so you do go clockwise and we're going to need to make, a couple of these, as you can see, to uh, improve some of the, the like machines and stuff. Um, so this right here is a breeding shrine. This is for making the shrines. Uh, but we're going to need this for other things, such as swift alloy ingots, which is on the docket list. We've got to get this done. So uh, to make an elemental binder, we need to put this on top of our tank or container. Uh, and I think it's going to be best to um, kind of have an extension off of here, off of this container, maybe have a couple of uh, other containers uh, that can also fill up. Um, and we also need to have that hooked in. That way we can have some attachments such as, you know, the elemental binder that we're about to make. This thing is pretty simple to make, pretty cheap. Um, and we're gonna need a container. So for example, this, and it's gonna be hooked to the air. And so I can just hook right into this pipeline and now what should happen is this, because this is full, it should end up going over here. And then we'll place down right on the top, our elemental binder. Now we are making swift alloy. So the recipe for this is gold, uh, drenched iron, copper, uh, redstone, but we also need an air crystal. So let's go ahead and grab an air crystal and we'll put that in here. That's gonna get produced. Um, and we can go ahead and get the other stuff. It was gold. Let me grab all of that gold that was drenched. I definitely remember copper and redstone. So pretty easy overall to remember. And there we go. And it does, it needs to go in this order. So it's probably best to put this in your hot bar, your, your item bar down here in the order that it's listed. Uh, this should be done. Yep. There we go. So this whole setup here, let's take a look at it again. Make sure we got it in the right order. 
I believe so. And we will put that in. So this goes in one, then this, 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 and last but not least, that one. And as you can see, once we've done this, it's going to create the element we need. Swift alloy ingots, which are used, well, for other things like these right here. Source water displacement plate. Um, this is going to be used to pick up those uh, those uh, element orbs that we see floating around in the area. So now keep in mind this particular recipe right here that I was showing before, where we're, our goal is to make the pure crystal. And uh, once we have this set up, we'll be pretty smooth sailing from there, but we need all of these pedestals and these pedestals require a gem. They also require the alloy that we just made. Uh, but to make these gems, you actually need a gem crystallizer, which requires the alloy as well. Also requires some of these shards, which we're going to get from doing the same process, exact same setup, but with uh, the water. As you can see, we use amethyst, netherite, and goes into that. So uh, the gem crystallizer is basically going to take um, some sort of material, such as this, uh, and it looks like pure crystal? It shouldn't be a pure crystal, but uh, we can make some of these lower tier ones, right? So for example, uh, the lower tier gems, uh, they require regular ones. To make the pure one, of course, you're going to need the highest one. Uh, but we actually need these crude gems in order to make these. So you can see this is going to rotate and we have a fine jewel. Looks like it's rotating between a fine jewel. So we need to make a fine one, which is going to require the shards. Looks like a diamond. And of course, this on each one of these. So this whole process to at least get to this point, we probably need a gem crystallizer for each setup. We're gonna need a, an extra tank for each setup. And uh, we're also gonna need an elemental binder for each setup. So there's a couple of machines we need, need to sort of get kind of put together. So I've buffed up our production of source. As you can see, I now have four individual go, going on. I, I think five would probably be really, really good. Uh, for this, but at the moment I have this. I think eventually I'll probably move this evaporator to another section of smaller containers because uh, it's just cheaper to make the smaller containers. These aren't any worse than these when it comes to just pumping the source around. But um, I'm currently working on the element binder. I have a binder on all of them. Uh, it, this right here is where our gem creator is going to go, the gem uh, crystallizer. But for right now, I've got to put this in. So one, two, and boop. And I've got to make four of these. Uh, because, actually, I got to make more than that, don't I? Because each one of these require four. It only produces one. And so I'm going to need uh, 16, I think. Yeah. You know, and that's that's for an optimal setup, right? Um, to have a crystallizer for each of the elements. It may not be the most practical thing because we could always move it around. Uh, but man, this does cost a lot of the water element so to make each one of these like it, it does really come at a cost these are not cheap on the uh the actual amount of source it does say medium medium amount but it really does consume a lot of it now i almost wonder do i actually need more than one of these gym crystallizers i i may not um now i do want to test this out so let me see this air over here of course we have a bunch of it and i have an air shard let's go ahead and put the crystallizer in here this apparently goes inside, uh, also a diamond. And so if we put a diamond in here, and then we also hit it with an air, a large air shard, that right there, then it should combine into that. Okay, so do I have to be faster with it? Because that's not what we need. This is just a crude air gem. Um, but what we need is a better one. We need a higher tier one. I guess at this point we could probably just put this in, right? And then this and hit it with this. And then that might turn into a pure or it might turn into the next tier. Is this, I don't know if this is random or not, but it combined and it didn't give me anything. Um, it didn't upgrade it at all. Interesting. Now this, I don't believe, I don't think these can be used. It doesn't look like it. It looks like it can only be a fine. Oh, and it's a t only a 20% chance to get this thing. Okay, so that is the case. And it, yes, it is only a 20%. Okay, 
So really, it's just a kind of, it's going to be a battle to kind of get this. You're going to be putting this in, this in, and hoping <laughs> with that 20% that you don't get a crude air. Instead, you get a uh, a fine one or a higher tier crystal. Oof. Oh, and look at there. We got a perfect one. That is nice. A very pristine one. Now to move forward, of course, I'm going to need one of each of these now uh, for the different elements. So there's the green. We actually ended up getting a fine one on our first go, which is perfect because we either need a fine or a pristine in order to make the pedestals, which are going to allow us to get to the pure crystal. And on the second try, I ended up getting a fine fire gem. And very nice. On the first try for the water, we got a fine water gem. So that is technically all of the different types, right? Um, now, of course, the quest in here are wanting more things, but uh, this should be everything we need for the most part. I've got to make some more swift, swift alloy, but this should be everything we need to go ahead and do our elemental binding and make an air pet, make a pedestal for each individual typing. So now at this point, it's literally just a matter of, well, getting all of our components crafted together. Uh, of course, making the air pedestal. I mean, we just put these few things together. I am going to need two more of these for each one. Uh, I probably should have automated this, um, but eh, I mean, it just it's not super like it doesn't take a whole lot of time to do this. So uh, we need one element. And then we also need our gym. Uh, in this case, we have a perf or nice pristine one. Uh, but like I said, that doesn't really matter too much. And then of course two. So we also need that the alloy. So here we go. We'll put this in here, this, one of these, and two of these. And that should be everything needed once it gathers up enough of the source to uh get this bad boy crafted up. We'll have a pedestal, and we're uh one step closer to one of the uh large crafting mechanics that this whole mod sort of boasts, you know, it's kind of the big part of this mod. And it looks like this uh, takes well, a high amount. Ah, that's why it's taking a while. It takes a high amount of uh, source. Don't know how much that looks like in the scheme of things when it comes to this container, but uh, it might consume the whole container and still need more. I don't know. Maybe I should have started it on this container, which was full. Um, but it is taking a lot longer. So I would say after that craft, it definitely consumed... A good amount. I mean, I would say like at least a fourth of the container or so. Uh, but now we have an air pedestal and I've got to make this. I got to do the same thing for all the other elements. So now I should have just about everything I need. I can go ahead and make a pure infuser that is going to go right smack dab in the middle. Uh, and then, of course, all of our pedestals are now completely finished. Very, very nice. I wonder if there's any rewards related to the quest for for doing that. I guess for the pure crystal, there's no reward, but um, the reward, I guess, is the satisfaction of getting this done. And you can notice right here, it does show you once this is placed basically where this needs to be. And now the unfortunate part is, well, we need to change the way we have a little bit of this set up uh, because this is right, <laughs> right in the middle of our sort of build here, this sort of setup. Uh, completely fine, though. It should be pretty easy for us to manage. Uh, but we are going to keep them in the same location. So, for example, this is where the earth is going, right? Um, so, fire pedestal will go there. Um, this is the earth pedestal will go there. This is the water, which will go there. And last but not least, this is the air pedestal, uh, which will go here. Perfect. So, with all that set up, uh, this is almost ready. All I got to do now is get our containers uh, sort of reset up and uh, get them fit where they sort of belong and uh, also sort of expand on how much source we are generating. Now, of course, after rearranging my entire setup that we're using when we're just really fueling this with our mob drops, um, we're just about ready. All we gotta do, all of this comes to this point, of course. Uh, now, next episode, of course, we are gonna work on uh, utilizing what we've made today. And uh, well, let's go ahead and get all this made and place this in. And there it goes. So this is what it's all led up to this point right here. Oh, that's so cool looking. And uh, this is literally just making a pure 
crystal. And uh, these are going to be used, of course, for several of the things that's going to help us benefit after this point. So right now we're using these, but we're also going to be including um, those sources uh, that we found around. And we need this to be able to move those sources. So with all that done, boop, there we go. We have ourselves a pure crystal. Now, of course, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Of course, without further ado, I'd love to thank the supporter of today's video. And that, my friends, is going to be a huge thanks that is going to Pappas Snappy. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over in the Discord and becoming a Discord Premium member. Now, uh, joining the Discord is super simple. All you got to do is go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect, or you can simply find it linked down in the description below. Uh, joining the Discord, you do not have to support it in any way, but uh, we have tons of resources there for you. Maybe you're interested in, in getting some help uh, with modded Minecraft or what have you. We have tons of support, tons of people, over 26,000 members on there. It's just mind boggling to think about that. But of course, this is the only way you could potentially support. Uh, you can support via Twitch. I do live stream on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect. Or there's a thanks button down on the bottom right of the YouTube video. Uh, that is one way to support the channel and also new memberships here that uh, give you access to sub servers and all kinds of stuff through the uh, YouTube members, uh, which there's a join button in the bottom left of this video if you're interested in becoming a member via YouTube. All the perks are all very similar uh, compared to all the other socials such as Patreon and everything else uh, that you might be used to. Uh, yeah, everything's linked through Discord, so be sure to check out the Discord. Guys, I appreciate you, of course. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and uh, I hope you enjoyed Elemental Craft. We'll be getting into more of it next episode. And of course, guys, as always, thanks for watching.